Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this radio has been sat in a pile of radios for a while now and I thought it was about time to quickly show you this little powerhouse of a radio. Now this is the Anytone AT588 Max and this model is the VHF model. Now what's special about this radio is that it outputs up to 70 watts. Well, that's what's specified. Now that's a whole 20 watts more than what we normally see on 50 watt radios, if my maths are correct. And now I also boast to have airband AM receive and AI noise cancelling on transmit and received audio. Now you get the usual accessories in the box like microphone, power cable, vehicle mounting bracket, but the microphone itself is multifunctional, meaning you can control some of the radio's features directly from the microphone. Now with the lock switch on the DTMF on and off switch, it does kind of remind me of those old Elinco microphones that you used to see knocking around. Now mine came with a programming cable, which was nice because I hate it when programming cables are optional extras and more expense. As mentioned earlier, this radio should output 70 watts and the casing of this radio shows that it kind of built for that, especially with its sturdy heatsink style chassis and that large fan on the back. Now we should see positive results when we come to test the output power a bit later in the video. On the back, there's a strange little DC output along with a speaker output socket. Now on the other side of this large heatsink here, there's an antenna socket, and that's obviously in the form of an SO239 socket. The front panel has a large VFO or channel change knob along with a fairly large LCD. The microphone socket is also on the front, which is in the form of an RJ45 socket. Now next to this, we find the data port, and well, that's in the form of a 3.5 millimeter socket. So don't go plugging your headphones into that. Above this, well, it's the volume control, which obviously adjusts the volume of the outputted audio. Now with the radio powered on, we can see the large screen is fairly bright and easily readable. Now it looks like a rather cheap screen's been used with the standard LCD and these old LED digit fonts. Now in this day and age, we should really be seeing proper displays with graphics and nice fonts, not something that looks like it's just been pulled out from an 80s time capsule. Now this version that I have does not have Bluetooth, so Bluetooth option will not be available. However, I believe there is a BT model. If you cast your mind back a few weeks ago, I did make a review on a similar model, which did actually have Bluetooth. Funnily enough, there actually are the same radios all made by Anytone and then OEM'd to other manufacturers. Now, if you want to use their bands, then you have to make sure you have it enabled in the menu by enabling AM receive. Now, testing the power output, we actually see a nice 70 watts output. And my meter is connected to a dummy load, which should provide a nice match and accurate power reading. Now, there's not much else to say there. It does what it says on the tin by providing 70 watts output. Audio output on receive is not too bad. It can be turned up quite loud enough to be used mobile. Take a listen to this. So Chris, do you want to have a go? Uh, be, or you've been, have you been listening or are you just up here on here? It's all KWT mobile with five miles to run. No, I, funnily enough, I've been, uh, um, I was listening here, but with the volume turned down, I hadn't realised it was in use. A transmit audio doesn't sound too bad either. Take a listen to this. This is M0 DQW testing the audio transmission on the Anytone AT5800 Max 2 meter VHF radio. M0 DQW testing over. One of the most important tests we can perform, and that's the spurious emissions test. Now, this is important, which not only ensures you're operating within your license, but also not interfering with other services on the band. According to this tiny SA Ultra, the transmission on 2 meter band is very clean. There's no serious harmonics that are out of spec. Now I think this is nice to see as some radios we've tested lately do actually fail at this part really badly. Now as far as I can tell, Chirp does not support this radio, but there is a free application you can download from the Anytone website to program the radio. Of course, you could mess around programming the radio through the front panel, but personally, I never do that. It's far easier to use a computer, and in this day and age, having a Windows computer at home can be extremely cheap. Now, the software covers all the settings and functions and allows you to program memories like repeaters, simplex channels, if you need to. 
Now I had thought about taking this out on top of a hill, plugging it into an antenna on the car and making some QSOs and recording it. However, I think you all know how a radio works. I do have some quite strong stations nearby, especially pages, which are probably less than a mile away. And well, I had no breakthrough on receive. I could listen to all of the two meter handband without any breakthrough from pages like we used to with old radios. So maybe the receiver's okay, who knows? Anyway guys, that's the Anytone AT588 Max radio. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Of course, you most likely have seen this radio before as other YouTubers have made videos on this radio, but I felt obliged to make this video because Anytone sent it to me. Anyway guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video where we'll get back to the normal schedule.